This week on Scam School, another cryptarithmetic challenge. Do you have what it takes to solve the puzzle? Probably. You're smart. You got it. Hello, you beautiful gentlemen. Why don't you toast my face? Boom! All right, hanging out at the newly relocated Kung Fu Saloon in Austin, Texas. Got nothing but old friends here. We got Matt, we got David. So here's the thing. A while back, we did some crypt arithmetic, and it, it was originally very, very challenging, but without much poetry. It was A, B, C, D, E equals blah, 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 blah. We then did another piece of crypt arithmetic that was odd plus odd equals even. Now, that had some poetry to it, but was way too easy. We figured it out. Recently, old time fan of the show sent into us something that was poetic and very, very challenging. It was so good that when I tried to solve it, I got halfway and I stopped and I handed it to David and said, tell me if this is solvable, because if it is, I want to try to solve it on the show. <laughs> so I don't know the answer to this, but David does, right? It is solvable. Crypt arithmetic is an arithmetic equation in which you've substituted letters for numbers. Now, it has to be the same letter for the same number all the way through, but it works out. And we saw the example with odd plus odd equals even, you could figure out what all the values were. So in this one, we all know that eight plus three plus nine equals? 20. That's right. However, eight plus three, three plus nine equals? 20. I guess, I guess we just dive in, right? So, okay. so you've seen the previous episodes. You know the building blocks of how to solve a crypt arithmetic puzzle, yeah. right? In fact, why don't you remind me, what are some of the things you remember? Well, like you mentioned, a letter represents a number discreetly and only that number. I'm assuming that two different letters won't be the same number. Ooh, yes, I, I will say that that's fair to assume. And then from there, I imagine it's just, we'll call it simple math. <laughs> This is me loosely remembering how we did it previously, but granted I had been drinking, unlike now, there's inductive and deductive reasoning, okay. right? You can make certain assumptions. For example, if this was just E plus E, you could assume whether or not it was an even or an odd number. Correct. Right, now it doesn't work here because we have T-E-E. -E. We have a six digit number. This is the only six digit number, T-W-E-N-T-Y. You can make some assumptions. The most this could be is 99,999 plus 99,999, which means this last digit, this T, could never be more than what? Uh, I'm gonna say one. I guess it could be zero. If this if this were another 9999, then you would have almost 100,000, oh, almost 100,000, uh, plus, plus another, almost 10,000. Yeah, so it, it, it would be a be. two. So, so I guess our first, our first axiom is that T can either be a zero, a one, or a two, and that's it. Right. Right? I, I, can, can you just let us off the hook on the zero? Like, it, it's not zero, blah, 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 is it? Right, of course it's not zero, right? So you can just cross that one okay, out. Okay, so we can eliminate that. So we know it's gotta be a one or a two. Yeah, you know, based on the same thing, you can also say E is not a zero, because you wouldn't start a number zero. Oh, that's right. So, so okay, okay. then might as well extend it to the end. Let's see if we can figure out whether it's a one or a two on the T. So the only way for it to be a two is for this to be over 200,000. Oh, 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 no, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. So the idea of this being a two is okay. based on the thought that if this is almost 100,000 and this is almost 100,000 and this is almost 10,000, then all three of them together would be 200,000 something. However, we know that T has to be a one or a two. Therefore, this oh. is almost 100,000 plus 20,000 plus whatever. So now we can effectively eliminate two. We got our first one. All right, T, T is equals one. What else, what else, what else? So one plus E plus E. One uh, plus even. We, we don't know oh, if that. that uh, y will be odd. Oh, there you go, that's good. Yeah, good catch. And it can't be a three because the only way to get three would be one plus one plus one. So we can now eliminate three. This is deductive reasoning, right? But what if the E was a six? Well, that ruins everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was really clever there for a second. What you stumbled on is 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 going to be the key. Is you have to remember remainders. I love the fact that there's a new host for Scam School. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's the one guiding us to the answer. <laughs> what size are E and T? E plus T. No, no, no. T T is a one. T is a one. Right. So E plus one. So E's got to be a pretty big number. No matter what these are, they're not going to be more than a remainder of two. 
So that means it has to be above six. So 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 let's say it's above six. Great, which which now we can take back to the other side of the equation, oh, right? Seven, okay. Eight, or nine. So so now we know it's a seven, eight, or a nine. If it's a seven plus a seven, that would be fourteen. Y would become five. If it's an eight, it would be eight plus eight, which would be a sixteen. So y would be seven. seven yeah. Nine, it would be a nine plus nine is 18, plus one is a nine, which it can't be, which it can't be, because we already have e cannot be a nine and also have a nine. If e was nine, it would be one plus nine plus nine, which would right. be 19, and the result would be nine. So we can uh, eliminate nine from e. So we know e has to be a seven or an eight. In describing that, you eliminated nine from y. Yes, we also eliminated nine for, oh, that's good, that's good. All right, all right. We'll figure out the rest of this after the break. Josie, can your dad cook? Not really. <laughs> that's, well, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully with our friends over at HelloFresh, I'll be able to fake it. You want to make chili? Do you know how to cook? I know how to cook soup, but it's terrible. <laughs> okay. They gave us all the ingredients, and we're going to follow instructions. Can you give me the instructions? What do you do? Watch and dry all broad. Duh. Produce. You never heard, You don't know the word produce? Uh, slice scallions. <laughs> slice. Thinly slice the scallions. Now we're gonna core in. Um, I don't know how to. They got pictures. Ooh, there's pictures. See, I could do. I could do pictures, right? Two. Cook. Pour. Wait. So we already did the first part. Yeah. One of six steps. High five. You want to keep cooking until it's cooked all the way through. Get, yep, all of it, all of it. See, oh. they, that's the whole thing. They pre-measure it, so you can't screw it up. That looks really good. Give it. High five. Oh, I got a high five. <laughs> Remove from the pan and set aside. So now, tossing until lightly browned and softens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next step, what's it say? Simmer chili. All right, so, this, so we gotta add everything. All right, here we go. This is the easy part. Real question, Josie. How much do you think all of these ingredients cost to make this meal? Less than ten dollars. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Somebody read the manual. <laughs> Man, I think we're about ready to eat. You ready to eat? Hey, look at that. You made a chili. So what'd you say? Was that easy? Pretty easy. Yeah? Six steps. Uh, we could do that every week. How, how much a meal? <laughs> Less than ten dollars. Nailed it. Nailed it. Boom. <laughs> what? All right, here's the big question. How do you save $30 off your first week of deliveries? Scam school 30. Nailed it. See? Yes, and this time it's off. Okay. Judging my high fives, I'm gonna eat my chili. How about that? Let's take this new knowledge back to the beginning. Okay. What's the difference between seven plus one versus eight plus one? Plus a potential remainder. Plus a potential remainder. Sure. Oh, but but, but, but that be... remainder cannot be more than two. Can we disprove the remainder being two here? Yes, the only way yeah. that this could have a, yeah. a two to add up top would be if, if this was essentially nine plus eight plus seven, uh, uh, which, which it can't be because we know E has to be a seven or an eight. So if this is nine, eight, and seven, yep. then, uh, then it wouldn't work. So we know the remainder has to be a one, which means E has to be eight. Is that right? Is that right? That is correct. Sweet. Okay, ooh, ooh. We have, well we had, no we have Y. Yeah, so, so Y is seven. So Y has to be seven. Oh, this is good. Think about what you discovered here and what that means for W. Oh, we now know, right? It's eight plus one has to be nine. Oh, so W has to be zero. Correct. Yeah! Okay. Oh, this is getting oh, easy. Oh, it's just filling in. Oh, we're getting so close, we're getting so close. 108,000 uh, in. One plus eight plus eight plus seven. We know we got a, a, 17, a, yeah. a one up there. So one plus eight, which is nine, right. plus H plus oh, right, N right. Plus one equals, equals one. one. Well, if you have eight and a remainder of one, yep. that's nine. We know these can't be one and one to give us 11, so we know right. that has to be 21. 21, okay, so H plus N has to equal 21. Uh, you know, H uh, plus N plus eight plus one has to equal 21. Right. Sorry, uh, yeah. H plus N has to equal 12. H plus N plus so, so that means it's got to be I, eight, eight, yeah, H plus I. Oh, this is great. H plus N equals 12. Right. H plus I plus N equals 18. So I equals? I'm going to say six or five. No, no, six. no. It's got to be only a six. <laughs> He's right. He's you're, right. You're, you're looking. No, no, no. Wait, wait. What do you because mean? H plus I plus N 
does equal 18, but there may have been a remainder from your GRI. Oh, we don't know what remainder right. goes in. Possibly I plus see. a remainder. So I'm willing to go six or five. Six or five. Okay, yeah, that works. You know what? What I would do is I would write down the numbers you have left to choose from in, in just a vertical column. Right, so now okay. you know that H plus N equals 12. Yep. Right? Yeah. So you have to go what two numbers from this set will equal 12? Oh, shoot! Oh. Because five and six won't. Right. It, uh, 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 and you can't. You don't have seven and eight available, so it's got to be nine and three. That's nine the only one. So now That's you know one. H is either a nine or a three, and N is either a nine or a three as well. I, we know, has to be about five or six, and we know three and nine are already spoken for, so that means these have to be relatively low numbers, like okay. four or five. The most they can be is five, so that means the remainder has to be one. And Correct. This, so that's great. So that means we got the remainder on here. Yep. So one. Oh, right. So now we have a remainder. Yes, um, yes, yes. Which yes. means it's five. Uh, I is five. It has to be five? Yes. And now we have five. Okay. I is five. Great. I is five. I is five. Oh, home stretch. So for at this point, for H or N, with the nine or three, just write it out one way. Uh, we're going to decide H is three. Now what we could do is we can actually just add these and yep. see how much of it lines up with our reality. Two plus whatever G and R is. The highest well, they can be they together to, is ten. You know they add up to N. So we have seven. The highest together they can be is 10, which would be 17, so that doesn't and the work. the most this could be is six plus four, 17. Right. But that's not true, so already it breaks down. So now we can, H &N. we can eliminate this one. We know H and N, right? right? So H is definitely nine and N is definitely three. So if that were true. Five plus two plus 10 does not give us that because that's 17. Right, so let's pick different numbers. So five plus two plus, uh, uh, so it has to be six. Not Total is six, it so six. it's gotta be two and four. So G and R have to be either two and four. So this is great, so this is great. So we figured out two more. So now we do the same thing. We do two realities here. Wait, actually, it's there's arbitrary. only one in G. Both there's only one G and R in, this, yeah, in the whole both thing. Both solutions work. Both solutions. Wait, there's two solutions, and we figured them both out. And your brain wilted at the power <laughs> of our mathematic prowess. <laughs> you guys got a toast. So it turns out there's a whole universe of cryptarithmetic out there. And a friend of mine, uh, Brad Winnington, told me one. And I asked him how he solved it, and he said, I don't know, just got lucky. <laughs> and so I was like, you gotta be kidding me. It is way harder than this one. This one had a bunch of intuitive rules that we were able to figure yeah. out and kind of isolate everything down. As best I can tell, this one is pure brute force. And I'm gonna have to turn it over to the folks who are watching to hash it out in the comments and see who's able to solve it because this one's probably the most poetic, complicated one. If you take the old aphorism, a penny saved is a penny. <laughs> Oh, jeez. The whole thing. <laughs> Equals earned. <laughs> Apparently, that one works. I don't know how. I was not able to solve it, but I'm betting that the fine folks at home can. That's your challenge, beautiful people. <laughs> Let's toast the people at home. Hey, you, you guys. If you want to take on the a penny saved is a penny earned challenge, understand that the rules are you don't get to cheat. No brute force in this. No using computers or whatever. I want to know by longhand if you have what it takes to solve this puzzle. Post it right in the comments below and we'll be best friends. Speaking of being best friends, hit me up at twitter.com slash wood. There is no C in Schwood. And of course, if you have a favorite unbeatable scam, bar trick, magic trick, hit me up directly at brian at schwood.com. And if you haven't already, then you've got to dive in to our new adventure as me and Jason Murphy are on a quest to become the ultimate gentleman, warrior, and scoundrel on the modern road. Looks like this. Oh, no! <laughs> Full disarmament! <laughs> Probably. You're smart. You got it. I believe in you. Not sure what's happening here. It's a condition. It's called conductor finger. It's a real thing. Talk to my doctor. He said, conductomazole is the right drug for me. Oh, we're getting so close, we're getting so close. <laughs>